bring in Joshua Wong. Uh, Joshua, good to have you on the show. And now you are the most recognizable face of Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. Uh, in our conversation with Joel, he said Hong Kongers are looking at this as the beginning of the end. Is that how you categorize it? Uh, yes, that's also what experienced and uh, realized by Hong Kongers in the previous few days, especially when Beijing introduced and announced that they need to uh, implement the national security law in Hong Kong. It's just turned Hong Kong from one country, two system into the era of one country, one system. This law just bypassed the legislature of Hong Kong, ignored any criticism by the lawmaker, and even didn't go through any kind of uh, process. Just once announced by National People Congress from Beijing, Beijing Jin just imposed it in Hong Kong and let the agent from China or police from Hong Kong to target activists or dissidents just like me and to silence our voice and just let more dissidents in Hong Kong okay. being targeted or prosecuted in China. There's a lot of things that you just uh, sort of said. I mean, what's your biggest concern when it comes to uh, these new set of laws? Is it is it uh, what you call sort of um, China's uh, draconian laws or is it the the, the, the lack of uh, legislative scrutiny or, or, or the way that it's being pushed through by China? Uh, no doubt at all. That's kind of draconian law because this law just uh, violate on the principle of freedom of speech because uh, it's not only targeting any hotline activists uh, engaging in street activism. It also targeted politicians engaged in international advocacy. According to our understanding, this national security law could let the agent or the government to arrest the politician uh, that uh, interact with uh, politicians around the world, no matter uh, travel to different country to uh, seek for support or allies uh, to enhance democracy in Hong Kong, or even uh, joining the congressional hearing in the United States could be one of the reasons uh, to be arrested or prosecuted by the government. So we just turn Hong Kong legal system into the way what China have. In the previous day, we always say that okay. uh, Hong Kong uh, is under threat, but now it's already what happening. I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. I mean, uh, you're in touch with many leaders around the world. What do you think their feelings are and, and how do you think uh, this will change the standing of Hong Kong within the international community? Um, in 2019, when Beijing tried to implement or introduce another evil law, more than 20 uh, consulate general from 20 countries uh, issued a statement to oppose it. And at least the evil law on 2019 still need to go through the legislation process in Hong Kong. But now Beijing just announced that it didn't, it do not need to go through any process in Hong Kong. It just rely on an announcement from Beijing. So when the separation of power exists in name only, and even it, this national security law could target Hong Kongers, but also foreigners, it just affected the interests of businessmen, investors, and also foreigners. So I believe the global community must keep an eye on it. Okay. Um, you've been at this for about six years. It goes, dates back to 2014. I'm wondering how you are going to continue with your efforts for uh, a freer, a more democratic Hong Kong uh, moving forward. Uh, we hope to continue fight for freedom and democracy and hope one day Hong Kong people can elect our government. But right now, what we're experiencing is they just have to turn Hong Kong to be the next Xinjiang or Tibet under the hardline crackdown from Beijing. But I think in the upcoming few weeks, we will try our best, mobilize as, more, uh, as many people as we can, and also seek for more allies around the world to stand with Hong Kong. All right, uh, Joshua Wong, great to talk to you. Thank you for your analysis and joining us here on TRT World. I do appreciate it.